Hello YouTube. In this video I'm going to show you how to use a Windows command and command prompt to be able to view what is actually connected to your system. So the first thing you're going to want to do is come over here to start and if you don't have command prompt anywhere right here don't feel bad that's pretty normal. What you want to do is come here to the search and run and click in there and the little text input box and type in CMD and hit enter. And what will come up is the command prompt for the Windows CLI. This is better known as DOS back in the older days. Nowadays, since DOS isn't quite as big of a primary part of the OS, it's still there, but it's not the main thing that starts before the OS, though it kind of does. So any and all claims that DOS has been removed is totally farce. It is very much so still there. So once you have the command prompt, what you're going to want to do is type in netstat. Now whenever you type in netstat put a forward slash and a question mark and this will give you all the information you need on how to use this command. This will give you the layout, the syntax, and of course any of the switches. You'll see this F displays fully qualified domain name for foreign addresses. N displays address and port number in numerical form. O displays the owning process ID associated with each connection. So that will actually tell you what the connection is tied into. P will give you the protocol specified. R, the routing table. S, T, there's a lot of different switches. The main thing we're going to do right now is run netstat. And this will show you everything that's actually connected to your system. All these that are 127.0.0.1, that's the loopback device. That's where the, the system is actually connecting to itself. The ones that actually go out to a different address are where it's connected to actual systems. Now, this, this particular system's ad IP address actually ends with 82. So, as you can see, it's identifying the servers here. There will be different addresses whenever you're connected to a different system. So if you see like a 8.5.4.4, that is going to be an outbound connection. As you can see right here, here's an IPv6 address. That IPv6 address goes back to my internal server. Right now, I have no real external connections going. Everything's connecting back to itself its own built-in servers, its own loopback device into different things, and of course, my actual, dessert, my actual server inside the house on my network. So, let's do this with the NFO. So now we're going to do netstat-nfo. And now you can see here the IP addresses. What does it do? There's your foreign address, your local address, the state, and the ID. So if you look real close, You'll see these right here, the loopback devices. Now we get into the server itself and oh look. Now you actually have external IPs that it's connected to. With this information you can actually see everything that's connected to your system. And if you go do some search on these PIDs you'll figure out real quick what each one of those is and what the service is. You can either end the service or end the connection that is going back to these. Now I can tell you right now none of these are malicious. Every one of these are various uh, servers that are running connected out to their respective systems and all of it's okay right now. Now if you start seeing some strange activity you can come in here and you can very quickly find out what those IP addresses go back to and everything else. That we'll cover in a different video. The big thing is, is using NetStat to be able to identify different connections that are made directly to your system. Commonly if you're connected up to the internet there are going to be quite a few external foreign IPs that are going to be connected to your computer. Again we can go back and run NetStat again
And here's the base information that it gives you in the first run. Now you'll notice some of these external connections are actually coming back to the domain names. That's why you use NFO is because it drops the domain name and it'll actually come back and give you the external IP. With that external IP information you can actually go find out who or where it's coming from. And with your firewall if necessary you can actually block it if you so determine to do. This information's out there for absolutely everybody as always. Watch, like, and share. Have yourself a great day.